Congressman, uh, congratulations. That was a decisive win on Tuesday night. No runoff despite nine candidates. What's What was the biggest takeaway from the results? Yeah. Well, thank you, Jason. It, to me, this is something that was a culmination of efforts from so many people. And I really want to thank all the folks who got involved with our campaign, who supported our campaign, who made phone calls, who knocked on doors. Uh, it was incredibly inspiring, and I was humbled to have uh, their support. And so I, I really want to, first of all, thank them. Uh, but I also think that uh, this is where uh, Texas Democrats want to go, as they want to have somebody who can bring folks together, who has a proven track record of being uh, an independent, of reaching across the aisle, of trying to get things done. I think we're very pragmatic, uh, you know, headspace right now, one in which I think is where most Texans are as well. How surprised are you that you avoided a runoff? Well, we were trying to get, you know, as many votes as possible. Uh, and as you know, Jason, I've I had to go through a runoff in 2018 when I first ran for Congress, even though we had a pretty substantial victory in that primary as well. And so I respect the process and I was prepared to do whatever we needed to do. But I kept my focus uh, both in the primary and I would have had what would have in the runoff as well uh, on Ted Cruz and what he's not been doing and how I want to be a senator for all 30 million Texans and not somebody who you know, slices us up and pits us against each other the way I think Senator Cruz has done. And so that was the way I campaigned throughout the primary. And that's what I would have kept my focus on in the runoff. And certainly now that we are officially in the general election, uh, that's where we're going to be. Let's break down the numbers here and talk about this, because I, I know you and your campaign have looked at this. The incumbent Ted Cruz uh, got 1.9 million votes in the Republican primary in Texas on Tuesday. That, that's more votes than Donald Trump got in Texas, which is an astonishing number. On the Democratic side, fewer voters over there. There were 565,000 votes that, that uh, you got in order to decisively win your campaign. But it's a quarter of what Cruz got, and that's a big difference. Well, I think they had a lot of competitive primaries on their side, of course, at the presidential level. I think that drew, drew a lot of the interest. Uh, but certainly our task is going to be the same, uh, regardless of what uh, the vote totals were at the primary, which is that we know uh, that we want to get more of our fellow Texans engaged in this election. Uh, and so I want to make sure that we are reaching out to everybody possible. As a voting rights lawyer, this is a passion of mine. As a candidate, it's a passion of mine uh, to make sure that I can go into every you know, corner of our state uh, and tell Texans, I want the honor of earning your support. I want you to be engaged in your democracy. I want you to feel like your voice matters because it does. How do you get that Democratic vote out, though? You, you have what, six, seven months to, to do that. But that's a challenge and it's been a challenge for every Democrat statewide. Well, to me, there's no substitute for hard work. And uh, that's good news for me uh, because you know I'm used to hard work from you know, making it from being the son of a single mother uh, here in Dallas uh, to you know Baylor to the NFL uh, to my career as a lawyer and in Congress, uh, I, I'm used to ha that that aspect of it, which is just the hard work of getting in front of as many folks as possible, but also helping some folks overcome uh, some of the hurdles that are in their way and also breaking down the idea uh, that your vote maybe doesn't matter because it really does uh, and your voice matters. And I, it, to me, our democracy is not a spectator sport. It's one where we all have to be engaged. And so I want to make sure that I engage as much as I possibly can as many Texans as possible. And that's what you'll see us trying to do over the next few months. Congressman, it's going to be difficult, I, I think uh, a lot of people might say, to rely solely on Democratic voters to win in November. Y you have to win crossover votes from some Republicans. You need the, the Texas independence. On, on what issues, though, do you think that you can do that? Well, I've always wanted uh, to build broad coalitions and to you know, appeal to everyone, regardless of what their party affiliation is. I respect voters enough to think uh, that they'll give you a shot, that they'll hear you out, and they'll make a decision based on who they think reflects their values and where they want to take their community and their state. And so that's what we're going to do uh, here in this election. I want to build a broad coalition of folks who want to protect and restore our freedoms, uh, protect and restore uh, the right, a woman's right to choose and access to abortion, protect our democracy, which is still very much at risk. Uh, but also, I want folks to know that I've been the most bipartisan member of the Texas delegation, that I have I pride myself on reaching across the aisle and trying to find ways and trying to find common ground in a way that I think is the exact opposite of Senator Cruz, who I think is one of the most partisan, if not the most partisan senators in the country, to the extent that when we have a crisis at our border uh, and we have a package in the Senate to try and address that crisis, he takes that package down, not because of the policies, he agreed with the policies, but because of the politics, because he wanted to run on the problem in November. I think Texans are sick of that kind of cynicism. I think it's going to help us build the broad coalition that I know we're going to need. Congressman, uh, you're, you're well known for compromise, for working across the aisle, for reaching across the aisle and talking to the other side. But but election results 
uh, would show that the the Republicans in Texas are moving further to the right. Many Democrats moving further to the left. There, there doesn't seem to be an appetite for compromise. Is, is that going to be a winning issue for you, though? I've always felt uh, that our people are better than our politics. And, and what I mean by that uh, is that when you talk to normal folks, uh, and, I, and I, this is something that always rejuvenates me, you realize that that's exactly what they want. Uh, they want somebody who can reach across the aisle, who can get things done, because they go to work every single day with folks that they disagree with, and they have to find a way to get things done. And I think part of the cynicism that we've seen uh, kind of creep into our politics and into our democracy has been because of this hyperpartisanship, because of folks like Ted Cruz, who've made it seem like there is no other way. And I want to show Texans that there is another way, that there is a chance for us in this election to elect a senator who will try to represent all 30 million of us, who won't pit us against each other, who won't try to take advantage of the seams in our societies to pull those apart, but will actually try to bring us together. That's something I've tried to do as an athlete. That's something I've tried to do as an attorney. That's something I've done in my time in Congress. And that's what I hopefully will do in the United States Senate. Congressman, since you started this uh, campaign last May, you, you've really proven yourself as a fundraiser on the Democratic side. Th this is going to be the biggest race in Texas this year. It's, it's going to be the most expensive race in Texas this year. How much do you think you're going to have to raise to, to be competitive in November? Well, I just want everybody possible to feel like that they can get involved in this campaign through multiple ways, uh, whether that's contributing whatever you can. Uh, and, or whether that's making phone calls or knocking on doors or just being an advocate in your own community uh, in the best way possible for you. And I think uh, that, to me, is how we're going to win this this campaign, is for Texans to feel like and to understand that we don't have to be embarrassed by our senator. We can get a new one, that we're not stuck with Ted Cruz, and that we can go in another direction. We had a very narrow election when he was last up for re-election. This is going to be a close election as well. And so it's going to be important that every single Texan out there understands that we would love to have your support in every way possible. I was raised by a single mom who was a public school teacher who didn't have the means to contribute a lot of money uh, to a political campaign. But she tried to find other ways, including having me hand out literature and things like that at polling places. And so there's lots of ways for Texans to be engaged. And I want every Texan to feel like they can be a part of this campaign. Do you anticipate this will be more expensive than the 2018 campaign? Well, I don't know. And I guess we'll just all have to wait and see. I think that it's going to be obviously a big campaign in every aspect. Uh, yeah. from both the, the fundraising side uh, to our you know, ground game in terms of turning folks out uh, to the attention that's going to be paid to it. Uh, and that's good because I think that will also draw in more folks and be good for our democracy. Congressman, congratulations to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Jason. Appreciate it.